Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Thigh Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a Bath & Body Works haul and first impressions review. It's gonna be in two parts. I'm reviewing a total of nine candles, hauling a total of nine candles, from the recent 1295 candle sale at Bath & Body Works in early May, 2022. It was part of sort of the summer one release where they released three sets or collections of candles. So there is the Oasis candle collection of which there were five cents. I purchased one of those. The Summer Vibes candle collection, there are six of those. I purchased three. So those four will be in this first video. And then there is the Sunshine and Daydreams candle collection of which there are six and I purchased five. So in order to not run on into a super long video, I have split them into two videos so I can really talk about them uh, because I am going to talk about the candles I did not purchase or haul as well, just to have a sense of my perspective on those, um, because I was able to sniff all of those uh, across the collection, all 17 cents. So first we're gonna talk about, again, the Oasis Candle Collection and the Summer Vibes Candle Collection. And so the Oasis Candle Collection, I'll tell you right off the bat, this collection has, again, five cents. There's Fiji White Sands, Watermelon Lemonade, Kiwi Starfruit Cooler, The Perfect Summer, and Ocean Driftwood. So. With this one, I'll say I kind of like the aesthetic. It looks like they have this sort of this art direction in soaps as well in a couple of collections. You kind of have this like arched, a bit of like an art deco maybe um, doorway. It feels somewhat tropical, maybe a little bit of like a 70s vibe with some of the colors. I just think it's a little bit different. It's a little, you know, a little cartoony, a little bit cheesy, but it's something different. So I appreciate the difference. What I do like as well is uh, you've got colored wax and colored lids. So you don't often see the full colored wax uh, these days, Bath & Body Works. They're really nice, vibrant. It's this kind of like muted color trend that seems to be out there now. So it's not neon, but it's not just a traditional. It's like intense, but slightly muted. Like I've seen some of these colors in, uh, I'm a big fan of Allbirds shoe brand and they, and now apparel and, and many other things, but uh, they have a collection that's kind of some of these muted, intense, but muted colors, a little bit softer. Uh, and I really, I'm a fan of those colors. And a lot of those colors actually are somewhat appear in the Oasis collection. So again, Oasis, collection, Ocean Driftwood. I'll sniff this one in a second, but just to give you a quick heads up. So Fiji White Sands, that's gonna be your sugarcane, white nectarine, sandalwood. To me, never been a huge fan of this. This is sort of, in my mind, it's derivative of sort of White Island sand, White Sands or White Fiji Sands back, you know, 2012 Boardwalk collection and then a, a few times after that in Destination collections. Similar to, but not as good as, and it's just, the mix for me doesn't really work. It's a little too generic, so I've never purchased that one. Watermelon Lemonade, it's been around the block since 2012. I purchased it the first time ever in the original collection it was in. Wasn't a huge fan of it. It's just watery watermelon. It's not particularly tart with the lemons. It's not particularly sweet. It's just kind of there. I think it's sold primarily based on just the mass appeal of the name and oftentimes the labels. Of course, that's gonna be watermelon ice, sparkling water, and Meyer Lemon. So pass on that one, though it was pretty, nice packaging. The Kiwi Starfruit Cooler, Starfruit, Sparkling Kiwi Seltzer, and a splash of guava juice, and that's on that one. I did purchase that one last year. I think I actually ended up exchanging it, though. I might have kept it, I can't remember. But I liked it on cold. There was something interesting about it to me. I think the kiwi with the guava and maybe the starfruit, it was intensely tropical. But when I compared it to some of the other tropical scents that I have from Bath & Body Works, from, you know, in my personal vault and other brands, it just wasn't up to snuff enough to make it one that I really wanted to ever reach for and burn. So if I have it, it's potentially unburned. I may have exchanged it, in fact. And then the Perfect Summer. So they played around with Perfect Summer, Perfect Spring, Winter, Autumn, just White Barn Summer, different candles like that with the names over the years. And so this one is listed as Sun Kissed Citrus, Orange Blossoms, and Coconut Husk. I sniffed with my mask on, and that's the one thing I will say with all of the scents. In store, when I purchased, I sniffed with my mask on. I still am masking up in stores in public. And so you don't, you get like maybe 70, 80% of the scent with the mask on, uh, with a good like can 95, but you miss a little bit. And so there are some where you get at home and it's like, oh, it's so much better than I thought, or, oh, it's exactly what I thought. And sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't pick that up in there. And so for some of them, I may end up exchanging based on not really loving them once I got them home, but based on their return policy and the fact that I want to be safe, I feel like that's that's completely appropriate. All that to say, Perfect Summer, to my nose, it smelled really similar to their Suntan Poolside, which I'm a fan of, but I've got a bunch of them. It's released as on an exclusive the past couple of years, and this seems like maybe a watered-down, lighter version of either 
straight up repackage or repackage with a twist of the suntan uh, scent. And that brings us to Ocean Driftwood. By no means is this a new scent. This, you know, there's the ocean side, there's the driftwoods, the, there's the mahoganies, there's the more masculine, summery ocean candles that come out. And this is right in line with those. And, and again, Ocean Driftwood, not new. New to me is actually the first time I purchased this exact scent, Ocean Driftwood, before. Notes on this one, beachside oak, sea washed mahogany, and ocean lavender. So based on those, you know, it's in your your flannels, it's in your black ties, it's in your any of the men's collection scents, and of course, your mahogany anything or teakwood anything candles at Bath and Body Works. And it is really, I mean, the mahogany is primary in there, knowing that mahogany teakwood also does have lavender and maybe a little bit of leather too, but does have lavender. It's really like, they could have just called this, you know, ocean mahogany or mahogany driftwood uh, in the sense that it's really, if they ever released a collection of all their mahogany apples, mahogany coconuts, mahogany peach, any of their derivatives of or family of the mahogany scents, this would very much be in there. And so it's, it's a version of versus a standalone scent in my mind. But when you do want something that's maybe like a darker evening scent and you want something that's a bit heavier, mature, it works. It's not my favorite. Kind of have to ask myself sometimes, like, if I didn't like the packaging, if I wasn't going to be reviewing it, would I need it? No. Would I purchase it? Maybe. Again, when, with 25% with off coupon, these candles were $9.71 each. That's pretty closely reminiscent to the 6 67 I used to pay, you know, in 2012. So kind of, it scratches that itch a little bit and it, it was worth checking out. So that is Ocean Driftwood. If you like the mahoganies, Certainly a, a good summer version of your mahoganies. Then we get into really the, perhaps maybe the star collection, I think for a lot of folks right now, and that is the Summer Vibes Candle Collection. Really pretty art direction, so I'll just you know pull this up here. They're all different variations of these paint brush strokes with a little bit of kind of gold leaf, gold flex in here. Very pretty, it's, it's reminiscent of waves, but it's also just artistic because they're not ocean scents in particular, just the summer vibes. But it's really nice because they've got the brush strokes, but they also have kind of a background color here that, that does keep this kind of translucent. And the brush strokes feel, they've got sort of, you know, your almost like an embossing or lacquering on top of them where you can feel the strokes as if it actually is painted on to the label. So really unique, very pretty. And you know, when it comes to this style of candle, you know, I love my more luxury candles with, you know, the glass that's, a, you know, a, a hand-blown vessel. Love all that. But when you get into this uh, demographic, this market of candles, this is really well done for a $9.71 on sale candle retailing for $26.50. So you've got some, some green ones here. You've got the yellow orange. You've got some blues. You've got a rainbow. So really pretty when it's all put together. So I have, in particular, I've got sour melon drop buttery popcorn and chocolate chip cookie. Um, take that to the haters who don't like food or 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 gourmands or baked goods incense. Not necessarily always the best, not always my favorite, but still fun. You know, it's, it's almost like the way I look at it, it's like a sommelier's sniff every kind of wine, whether it's the ones they love or not, whether it's considered a high end or a, a low brow or whatever it is, they're gonna smell it and they're going to learn from it and see what they do like, what they don't like and be able to hopefully educate people um, along the way and figure out what we like and why we like it. That's my perspective. That's the Touch of Fire Twice idea and mission, really. So anyhow, uh, the I'll talk through the three that I didn't purchase in this collection because I really disliked most of them actually, though they're pretty, but I will never buy a candle just for the label or marketing because I'm here to sniff it and burn it. So first up, Berry Fruit Punch. Notes on this, tropical berries, sweet pineapple, freshly juiced oranges. It smelled very generic to me. Now, if they were to go in their own vaults, even if they're pulling from like their Slack & Co era, which they certainly bring back some of those scents, Bath & Body Works, even though Slack & Co has, you know, Harry has his own name and company name back with his branding. They have pink sangria that they could pull from. They have their island nectars. They have literal sangria scents. They have lemonade scents. They have so many sparkling berry spritzers. They have a ton of scents that could have been this one. This is just a super generic, lazy um, blend of a berry, again, fruit punch. I smelled it with my mask, so I didn't, maybe I was missing a note here or there, but unimpressive, just didn't smell juicy, drinkable, or even summery to me. So 
Unfortunately, a big pass on that one. Red, white, and blue cake. Notes on that one, red raspberries, ripe blueberries, whipped vanilla cream, and soft white cake. Sounds like it would make sense. And it didn't smell anything like that to me. I didn't get a cake note. I didn't really get a berry note. It was vaguely reminiscent of a fruity, sweet thing, but it smelled kind of sour almost to me. And in, I, I'm, I can get on board with a, a tangy, like, you know, an olive oil cake or sour cream uh, and citrus put into fruity uh, cakes or frostings or any baked goods and it adds like an edge to it. This wasn't, that was not their intention, I'm sure. It just was sour and, and just not good. It, it was a bummer because it was, again, pretty. It was red, white, it was blue. It, it just a big mess for me. It didn't smell like cake even. And then finally, Rainbow Waves. That's their pride candle this year, which is great to see. Represent representation really matters. The notes on that one, Sunny Sangria, Bright Melon, and Misty Waters. What is Misty Waters? Like, is it oceanic? Is it ozone? Is it a lagoon? What, what does that mean? And Sangria, so it should be like a, a bit of a wine with some sparkling with a little bit of maybe fruit or some orange in there. The melon, okay, fine. It just smelled cheap, almost like a cleaner to me. It wasn't an edible, drinkable fruit. It was fruity, again, it could have been a kitchen spray. It could have been a generic, you know, Glade wall plug-in of summer fling. It could have been anything to me. So really disliked that one, and that's a bummer because I would have liked to purchase it. Big pass on that. Big pass on all three of those, for me at least. But it brings us to the other three. I would say these aren't slam dunks, OMG, bulk purchase, they're incredible. I'm gonna make my final call for me on these once of course I burn them and I will maybe either update this post or post on Instagram or in comments sort of the post burn impression reviews if that changes on any of them but at least when I do my initial sniff and back in the day I'm touched twice 10 years ago I almost entirely just did the first impressions and sniffed them on on cold uh, and most of the time in most ways that does hold true though these days there's a lot more variability especially across brands but getting to sour melon drop I believe this is likely a new blend it is certainly to my understanding a new name. The notes in this one, juicy candied watermelon. So it's a good call out because I think a lot of times we're seeking a true fresh watermelon, but most of the time we're gonna get more of like a Jolly Rancher candied watermelon and they're calling out candied watermelon. So can't hold that against them. Sour green apple and bursting honeydew melon. All right, so watermelon, honeydew melon, and green apple. And I believe they say drop as if to say the, the description on the site says something about like a, a juice bar or something. So like a beverage or maybe even like a, a like shot or, or, or cocktail or something. It's interesting, it's decent. It's definitely heavy on the candied watermelon. So you've got sort of the Jolly Rancher type of candied watermelon, not unlike their pink watermelon, you know, the different melons that they've done over the years of Bath and Body Works. What I get in here as well, honeydew, I suppose, I do think there's some honeydew because I also feel like there's a bit of cucumber, just the tiniest hint of like, not cucumber peel, because that can be kind of bitter and astringent, but almost a like cucumber water. If you just put like peeled sliced cucumber into water, you know, maybe you're in a spa or something, or you're just at home, and you, there's that little bit of green freshness that is not from the apple. I don't get, I don't get sour, particularly maybe just a tiny bit of like a citric acid sourness, but not much. And I don't really get apple. I mean, if you pop the Jolly Rancher watermelon in your mouth and a sour green apple Jolly Rancher in your mouth, I suppose you kind of got that, but I'd say it's like 60% watermelon, 20% honeydew melon, 10% green apple, 10% cucumber water, maybe a little bit more in the cucumber water than the apple. But so in my mind, it's almost like if they were to mix their traditional cucumber melon, which I believe is heavy on honeydew versus watermelon, with a, a solid hit of cucumber, but not super botanical, still almost cucumber water versus a really biting, astringent cucumber peel. So your cucumber melon with a watermelon candle, that's pretty much what I get from this. Again, just a little bit, not quite, I was, I was gonna say not as quite as sweet as cucumber melon, but it's like sweet in a different way. And I think it's because there's more watermelon in here than honeydew melon. And I believe there's more honeydew melon in the cucumber melon. So it's not dissimilar to either of those. It's not groundbreaking, but it's nice. I could see this being, you know, there's a place for melons. I don't lean much in the watermelon. I really like Homeworks' sweet spring melon, which is heavy on cantaloupe, which is really nice. This is a good blend of like, there's some honeydew in there. I would prefer, bring back a like honeydew in time from Slack & Co, failed test scent 2012. That had, I love a botanical in there. Bath and tends to keep it a little bit more straightforward for like the sweeties, the candies, because 
you know, they could throw in thyme or some rosemary or something botanical or herbal in here and it would be a game changer and make it, in my mind, just a little bit elevated, less confectioner candy store, cavity inducing sweet beverage to something that is still really tasty but has more going on and a little bit more complex. So that would be if, if I could do it. But at its core, it's, it's nice smelling. Certainly summery, bright, fresh. Then let's go to buttery popcorn. I know a lot of folks are saying this is likely pretty close to the sweet kettle corn, which I never smelled, so hard to say. I can't confirm or deny from my nose on that one. Notes on this one, melted butter, fresh popcorn, a sprinkle of sea salt. This one is interesting. It's not as strong as I thought it would be. I was expecting maybe like the very overwhelming kind of like jelly belly, jelly bean buttered popcorn. Thankfully, it's not quite that. There's a bit of a sweet, freshness to it, which maybe that's, I could see where this could be called, like if this was either a repackage of or a repackage of the twist of like a kettle corn scent, I could see that because there's something sweet in here. You, it's buttery without being heavy, gross artificial butter. Although let's be honest, most movie theater popcorn is gonna, is, you know, that has that orange yellow powder that doesn't necessarily have any true butter in it. What I'll say is missing from this, there's the background of popcorn, but a little bit, like almost a little stale, a little dried out. There need, I wish there were more corn in here. I think, I mean, whether it's masa or like tortillas or straight up popcorn, there's a strong corn scent to that. And to me, I don't get a ton of that. This is more pre-packaged butter popcorn, or if you were to purchase, you know, back in the day, there'd be those tubs where it'd be like, a third of it would be cheddar, a third of it would be caramel, and a third of it would be butter and it's just, you know, shelf stable and sold wherever for 20 bucks or something, but it was probably popped two months ago. That's kind of what I get from this. Like it's not a freshly popped scent. The more I sniff it, I may give it a chance and burn it. I might just exchange it. I don't know. I The idea of popcorn in the home, uh, I wouldn't ever say, oh my gosh, I want to burn a popcorn candle necessarily, but I, I don't dislike the scent of popcorn, but yeah, there's just something on top of this, a, a sweetness but not just a sugary sweetness or even like a caramely sweetness like you might expect from a kettle corn or, or something where it's starting to like brown butter or caramelize. I like to hear what everyone else thinks in this. It's a little strange to me. I'm glad it's not grossly buttery, but it's strange. It's strange for me. More strange now than when I sniffed in the store. And moving on to chocolate chip cookie. Look at those deep blues. Kind of screams Chips Ahoy a little bit, which I'll get to in a second with this. Notes in this one, oven baked cookies, gooey chocolate chips, hint of flaky salt. There you go on that one. So I know some folks are saying, and, and I, I tend to agree on first sniff on this, that this reminds them a bit of maybe like the homemade cookies, the Slacken blend from let's say 2009 or 10. That was not your Mary cookie that you see now, which is really just your sugar cookie or sometimes even just like a cookie dough. It really is more of a chocolate chip cookie. This is, I, I don't have that anymore. I had it a couple of times, but burned through it, you know, 10 plus years ago. This is reminiscent of that in that it definitely, there there is the scent of chocolate in here. And it's not a dough or a batter. It's a, I would say like a crumbly cookie. So it's not like, it doesn't smell chewy. I'll say, again, I'm not trying to hate because I bought this and I bought two of them actually thinking, okay, maybe either I'll swap one out later, or maybe it would be good enough if it really was closer to the old homemade cookies, which was really warm. It was buttery. You could really pick out the different pieces of that, the notes in that candle. This to me, there is an artificiality to this that rather than smelling like a homemade fresh cookie using whole ingredients, it's got a bit of that like open a bag of chips ahoy. So like grocery store, mass-produced, artificial flavoring cookies. Part of that I think could be coming from, yeah, I gotta be honest guys, the chocolate lean's pretty cheap for me, uh, almost like scratch and sniff chocolate, not even like your hot cocoa and cream chocolate, the powdery chocolate. There's a sharpness to it that I think is from like maybe a bittersweet chocolate, but it just smells like artificially flavored chocolate in a way. And there's a crumbliness to this, which, you know, it's not a gooey cookie. It's not a chewy, crispy cookie. It's kind of like, think of like your Chips Ahoy or Mrs. Fields or those kind of famous Amos, your mass market cookies. 
where it just could like crumble apart your hands and you can make like cookie crumbs. It's kind of like a cookie crumb cookie uh, candle. <laughs> but yeah, there's just some edge. I, I keep going back and forth between, oh, that edge is just like a bittersweet chocolate chip versus that is artificially scented, which of course this is artificially scented, but like smelling like an artificially scented cookie versus smelling, you know, artificially, synthetically scented to be a, an authentic cookie. Fine line. I have to burn this one to see how, if it warms up and really smells like a bakery gourmand or if it leans artificial. So TBD on that one, I would say definitely get your nose on it. I think a lot of people may end up liking this because it is new, it is different on first sniff and it is a chocolate chip cookie that, you know, there's not many chocolate scents. Bath & Butters has done much um, in the past years when it comes to bakery gourmands. So interesting, jury's out on that one. I would say my favorite of the bunch probably would be that sour melon drop. That I can get behind sort of a, a summery tropical scent pretty easily, regardless of how authentic it may be. That is my first impression of the first part of this haul. The first, again, two collections here, the Oasis candles and the Summer Vibes candles. Stay tuned for my second part, which is going to be five of the six from the Sunshine and Daydreams candle collection. And until then, take care.